I flunked out of college in my freshman year. Oh. And I have since been given an honorary Doctor of Laws degree from that same university <laughs> for my Wall Street accomplishments, you might like to know. I have a very personal gratitude. That is the fact that I had the, um, the pleasure and the uh, ability to uh, experience one of the greatest bull markets in the history of the United States and li live through it and have been a participant in it. Yes. Um, and you know, that once in a lifetime type thing, it's coming in the business in the late 50s and then going all through the 60s. And yeah. finally the market broke through 1,000 yeah. and then 10,000 yes. and now 20,000. Yes. You know, it, uh, it's yeah. kind of fascinating when yes. you think back. Yes. You've yes. obviously got to look at the long term picture on a log scale. Yes. Keep it in perspective. Yeah, there, a lot has happened. Um, you know, what we do is, as you just mentioned, we, we follow the markets. But I know you've had, in your early days, had a beginning in fundamental analysis. Tell yes. us a little bit about that, because you have an interesting story about when you were writing. Well, I, was, I, I, I flunked out of college in my freshman year. Ah. And I've since been given an honorary Doctor of Laws degree from that same university <laughs> for my Wall Street accomplishments, you might like to know. How much you have to pay for that? I mean, no, I, that's no, another that's discussion. The donations <laughs> in the I'm <world>. only kidding. <laughs> but uh, the point was that uh, I, uh, I really didn't have any background in finance except accounting yeah. my one year. Yeah. I passed that. Yeah. And uh, I discovered at Harris Upham, uh, I was doing a lot of work for Ralph Rottenham statistically overbought, oversold indicators, or just doing research for them. In fact, my first computer was a slide rule, uh -huh. and I used to do relative strength analysis, really? calculating ratios with the slide rule, wow. dividend yields, PE multiples, all that stuff. Yeah. And yeah. they had specialists in the research department, and I was in my early 20s at the time, and uh, again, without any formal education, but I, I went to Ralph and I said, you know, you don't have anybody specializing, specializing in the consumer uh, 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 non-durables, like foods, beverages, soft drinks, yeah. whatever. And he said, well, would you like to take a crack at it? I said, yes, because I think that there's a tremendous growth opportunity that these are not really, you know, and often defensive stocks because of the growth of things like frozen foods, wow. convenience foods, the profit margins on these products were incredible. Which is the early 60s, you yes, said? Yes, exactly. Growth industry. Wow, yeah. look at that, huh? And then, so that was That's my exciting. thesis. The whole it was called investment opportunities in the food industry. Little did I know, Ralph, that I was publishing a report in the early stages of one of the greatest consumer non-durable sector runs that nice. was that came to life all of a sudden to keep that market trend alive. Wow. Anyhow, Ralph Rottenham used to commute with a fellow named Jim Morgan. Oh, sure. From Morgan, Princeton, Rogers, and Roberts. Yes. yes. Jim Morgan was the principal partner at Morgan, Rogers, and Roberts. And they were located at 140 Broadway, one building north of us, where we were on 120. And uh, Ralph called me in his office one day and he gave me this book that Jim Morgan had given him, written by a gentleman by the name of Alexander Whelan. And it was called Study Helps in the Point and Figure Charting Technique. Yes, the Bible. Yes. Uh, and I, I looked at Ralph. I said, you want me to read about this tattoo stuff, the X's and the zeros and all? He said, well, just take it home and read it and see what you think of it. Well, I found it to be absolutely fascinating. Yeah. Not believing anything, of course, because I, I was now you know, looking at earnings and managements and, and balance sheets and income statements and so right. forth. I was looking at companies, not really stocks. But... Uh, Unbeknownst to Ralph, I took a walk over to 140 Broadway one day and I said to Jim Morgan, I said, you know, I'm fascinated by what I have superficially learned so far from this book by your colleague, Mr. Whelan. Is it possible you could give me some sample charts from your library and uh, I can try to keep them up to date by hand uh, going forward? And if it's going to charge me, charge me. You know, I'm not a rich guy, but I'll be happy to, you know, pay for some of it. So he was very... Very happy to do so. Yeah. So I walked back with Charter General Foods, National Dairy Products, Swift, Armor, wow. all, all, all these, all these foods. Companies, yeah, all, yeah. yeah. And uh, I used to uh, keep them up to date by hand every day. And when somebody walked by uh, in the research department, I'd shove them in the desk drawer, you know, because I, uh, people thought that you were a sorcerer or, a, <laughs> a, you know. A, witchcraft. A, a witchcraft, yeah. yeah. So yeah. anyway, 1961. I started to see patterns develop on these charts 
that I, 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 uh, made me very, feel very uncomfortable. Wow. So I went to the book, yeah. to uh, Mr. Whelan's book, and on page 25, they had example of point and figure price patterns. Yes. And the ones I was finding happened to be in a column called market tops. Oh, last stage in the move. Yeah, they were all rolling over. Wow. Like, you know, the difference between the frown and the smile. Yeah. And I showed these to Mr. Rottenham, and, and I said, Ralph, I said, all my fundamentals are on target. The earnings are coming through. The growth projections we forecast are happening. I know the stocks have doubled and tripled, which they did. Yeah. I mean, I was a big hero of the research department, the Good. food analyst. Yes. That's a joke in itself. Um, so he said, well, Alan, he said, what do you think you want to do about it? And I said, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm petition between. He said, well, you know, you might be about to learn something. So anytime he said something like that, I would sit down and, and listen and listen intently. Yeah. And I said, yes. Ralph, what is it now? He said, you're going to learn maybe how to separate a company from its stock. There you go. And, and I had to sit there and reflect on this. What is he yes. talking about? Yep. I said, you mean the, the stock might go in a different direction than, than the company? Yes. He said, yes. He said, because the market is a discounting function. The market is a discounting function. It, it, it looks to the future, not to the past ever, and so, seldom to the side. So the reason these stocks are all up is because the things that you thought might happen have happened. And it, he said it's almost like the stockholder who raised his hand at the annual meeting and asked the president, how's the business? And the business turned to the guy and he said, business couldn't be better. Yeah. Well, the stockholder ran to the nearest phone, called his broker and sold all his stock. And the broker said, why are you selling everything? Because he said, the president just told me it couldn't be better. Yeah, can't get better, it can only get worse. And that's, that's the whole trick right there, you see? Wow. In price, there is knowledge. Absolutely. Markets are discounting functions. Yes. So I sent out in those days the typical brokerage lines, not sell, but we would have no objection if clients wished to book profits. Book profits. And, uh, and, and, lighten up and lighten up positions. Excellent. And Ralph, the 1962 bear market came out of nowhere. Wow. My stocks crashed 30, 40, 50 percent in that bear market. Wow. That's cool. uh, so yeah. the timing aspect, exactly. which is what technical is all about. Exactly. Just and I look back it. and I see I wasn't smart enough to know that 49 times earnings was expensive for General <laughs> Foods. And that was the multiple at the top that it topped out in. Yeah, of course, of course. So from that point on, that would be like 62, 63, 64. Yeah. Uh, is actually what I started teaching a course at the Institute of Finance because a lot of our trainees were coming back from the Institute and telling me things they were supposedly learning, which I didn't think had any real relevance. relevance. So they, they, they gave me a chance. And I always said, if you want to learn a subject, you teach it. Yes. And so uh, I started to do that. And then I discovered that uh, uh, there wasn't enough time for just a one course, so I started an advanced course. Yes. Tuesday night was the elementary course, and Monday night was, was the advanced it. course. So anyhow, uh, I... And then when I joined you, yeah, you gave me the basic class to teach. That's right. And you, I've been you, teaching the first for, class for the last I, 49 years. Exactly right. And uh, with you, we yeah. taught the street. <laughs>